what an eventful day it's been, folks. So, as of this recording, there has currently been a supposed terrorist attack in Berlin as a truck driver basically rams into the um, Yuletide marketplace in Berlin, central Berlin. And then, of course, we've had a incident where the Russian ambassador to Turkey has been shot. Now, the issue with the thing in Berlin, I can't speak on. I don't have the information. I don't really have any real solid information as of yet, as this is just breaking news that I've been hearing about from the last couple of hours. Ultimately, though, what I can at least analyze and predict, at least in one of the instances, is that with the case of the Russian ambassador, I really wouldn't be surprised if in some cases this isn't some sort of like post-Soviet separatist group that has an issue with the Russian government. Um, I wouldn't be surprised, for instance, if it's like some sort of an ISIS sort of connection, maybe Chechenian rebels, because Chechnya has definitely had issues with the Russian government for years now. Um, even down to possible, like, Armenian issues that have been going on, because let's be honest, after the fall of the, uh, basically Armenia uh, has always kind of been in that kind of, you know, Ottoman, Turkish, like, um, Russian sort of background. It's always kind of been a, one of those border sort of states. And so there could be some sort of Armenian connection, um, you know, there's still those separatist groups that are there, like in South Ossetia and um, Abkhazia, so there could be rebel separatist groups from there. It's, it's not widely known, and then there could be a myriad of other options. So, ultimately, nothing is known as of this point, and it's really kind of going to be interesting to see all the other news, all the other rumors and run-of-the-mill stuff that you'll see coming after that. What's really coming at a bad time is this whole issue with Russian-Turkish relations. Russia hasn't exactly been on greatest of terms with Turkey, not, not just historically, but just lately, as of recent, especially given the whole issue over uh, the fact that Russia has accused Turkey of not doing their fair share to stop ISIS. And so, obviously, there's been, and along with the resounding Russian nationalists, there's also resounding Turkish nationalism going on. So both, so tensions are extremely high in those in the uh, Caucasus area. Now, another big issue, obviously, is over the issue, uh, not just with ISIS, but over the whole uh, war that had been going on in Syria. So there have been issues with that, and then just in general, just your general Russian-Turkish relations are not very good. They haven't been good for a long time, but as of right this minute in 2016, going into 2017, Russian-Turkish relations have probably been some of the worst that they've ever been. So much that I wouldn't be surprised if at some point the, these tensions, were, if the tensions continue to mount, that these two wouldn't be willing to go to war with each other. And if that's the case, Russia would win by a landslide. I mean, we saw what happened when Russia invaded um, invaded Georgia. They absolutely annihilated the Georgian army uh, over the South Ossetia and Abkhazia debacle. The, the Russians went into Crimea after the Crimeans voted to join Russia. They rolled right in there. The Ukrainians didn't stand a chance. And then, of course, we, you know, we could also say that, you know, the Russians have been kicking Nazi ass in eastern Ukraine against the fascist government that they currently have. And just in general, the Russians kick ass when it comes to fighting ISIS, the so-called scourge of the planet that we have all been told to fear. Well, why should we fear a group when Russia is kicking their, basically can just annihilate pretty much their entire fucking land fleet in a matter of hours. So this is, 
one of those things that Russia really right now is going to become a player in the next couple of years. So the fact that the, the, the death of this ambassador came at this point came at a really bad time. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see how the Kremlin responds to Ankara's uh, response to Ankara after this whole incident had occurred. Now, the other issue, of course, is the Berlin uh, massacre that just happened a few hours ago as well. Very little is to go on. Of course, the media is already calling it a terrorist attack. It's yet to be seen. Of course, the reason why they're calling it that is because there's been a wave of extremist violence that has come in the last year. I mean, obviously, we remember in November the, the Parisian attacks. We remember the... Um, we also remember the attacks that happened in Nice um, about a few months ago, in which a similar incident with a guy running over about 50, 80 people, you know, that ended up becoming a big thing there. And so it wouldn't be surprising if Nice and uh, Berlin aren't connected. But it's kind of hard to say what what's what at this moment. And so obviously there will be an investigation, and I, too, will continue to look into it as time goes on. Um, the only other thing I can honestly say is, right now there's just been a whirlwind of stuff going on today, and obviously another thing that's been going on is Donald Trump being elected by the Electoral College, not surprising, as they met today, and they cast their votes, and many people hoping that the Electoral College would vote against him when this is the same system that got him elected in the first place. So, basically, basically the whole issue with this is just, you know, people thought that the Electoral College would somehow not get him elected. No, it's the same Electoral College that basically, that basically elected him in November. Nothing's changed. It's the same system it's, that got him elected, the same rigged system. It's bourgeois democracy. So, we shouldn't be shocked. I mean, it's not really that surprising. So, a lot of people that are, that are absolutely crying out about this, this, skirt, this complete overthrowing of democracy. No, democracy in America hasn't existed in a very long time. You know, America was built by the rich for the rich, not for the people. And that's the thing that a lot of Americans don't seem to understand. That's why with this news that the Electoral College elected him, it's no, how is this different from Athenian Greece when they when the when basically the oligarchy elected their representatives? Same shit. Just different time frame and bigger assholes. So, those are the news bites that are basically swirling around today. Once more information gets in about Berlin and, um, and with the issue going on in Turkey, um, hopefully I'll be able to provide that for you and um, we'll roll from there. But until then, just going to have to be patient, guys. And if nothing else, until I can get around to it, keep following the news and any questions, send them to my Facebook or send them to my Twitter. And I will try to get back to you as soon as I can on that. So I'm NorCal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement. This has been NorCal Corner. I will see you again. Peace. Hey!